This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about Bitcoin and private property rights. This sounds like a somewhat boring topic, but as I'm going to show, private property rights are extremely important if you want to build a productive civilization. This video was prompted by reading this article about a recent vote in Berlin, Germany, where Berliners just voted to seize housing from big corporate landlords. Uh, by a majority, 56% voted for this referendum. And the idea was they would force uh, large corporate landlords to sell their housing units to the city and they would be turned into private, I'm sorry, into, uh, into public housing. Now at the surface level, I have to say I'm quite sympathetic to the voters who voted for this, even though it's, it's a misguided referendum simply because you have large corporations that have cornered the market in housing in many of these big cities. And for those of you who say that this is free market capitalism, this is not free market capitalism. This is crony capitalism. This is Cantillian capitalism. Cantillian effect is just those who stand closest to the money printer and the banking system benefit disproportionately from money printing and low interest rates. So these large corporate landlords in Germany and elsewhere can borrow money at very low rates from banks, and thus they are able to pay more for properties than their competitors. And the bigger you get, the bigger you can get. We have what's called economies of scale. But what I think a lot of people are missing is why has housing become so expensive worldwide, and especially in these sort of city centers, it really has to do with the money printers. And what happens is the money printer goes burr, it dilutes the value of the currency, the currency loses purchasing power, and thus housing prices go up, stock prices go up, real estate prices go up, and by extension, rents go up. If you don't own assets like a house or stocks or Bitcoin, these sort of uh, scarce assets, then you've really uh, been hurt over the past, uh, call it five years, and especially over the past 18 months as the central banks have really revved up their money printing. So this is a, a case where central bank policy really exacerbates the gap between the rich and the poor and causes, uh, causes more wealth inequality. That being said, the what, property rights, private property, property rights, are one of the most important things you can have. Here is a, uh, this is the Private Property, uh, property Rights Alliance. And if we scroll down and see a list of the countries that have the worst uh, private property rights. We see countries like uh, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Haiti, Yemen, Venezuela, Bangladesh, Angola, Congo. This correlates very well with very bad places to live, places that uh, you try to get out of if you were if you were living there and you are ambitious. These are places that have a lot of crime. They have a lot of corruption, and all of this uh, a lot of this stems from the lack of private property rights. Basically. Private property rights are essential to creating an advanced civilization, as we said. And it works this way. It's just a simple question of incentives and motivation. Why work really hard to make something or build something? Maybe you build a new house during your or on the weekend or during your after hours after work, and then you try to rent it out. But why, why, why bother to do something like this if it can just be taken away by the local authorities, by the local strongman, or by a national dictator? or even by a democratic vote by city members as happened in Berlin. In this kind of society where you're, you don't have real property rights and things can just be confiscated, you're better off actually joining the opposition. You're better off joining the dictator and benefiting from that confiscation, becoming one of the thugs yourself rather than building something. And so this creates, when this happens a lot, you end up with countries that are basically failed states like Liberia and Sierra Leone. Now, Bitcoin is scarce, like high-quality real estate. There's only 21 million. It's the original and only form of digital scarcity. Digital scarcity, as I've said many times, can only be invented once, just like the Mona Lisa can only be invented once. Everything after that is just copies. But the amazing thing about Bitcoin, unlike real estate, unlike Berlin housing or Berlin real estate or any other sort of real estate, Bitcoin does not rely on any legal system to protect its private property rights. It doesn't rely on any authority, any centralized authority, any political figure, any political party 
to protect your private property rights. As I also like to say, Bitcoin is for enemies. It's for your enemies. And just as Bitcoin is for you from your enemy's perspective. The great thing about Bitcoin, if you hold it in self-custody, if you hold it on a hardware wallet and have a recovery seed, if you're not storing it on an exchange like Coinbase or any other crypto exchange, Bitcoin does not require you to trust anyone. Even gold was confiscated in the U.S., supposedly the freest country in the world. This was because the U.S. needed to devalue the dollar. And as part of this process in 1933, uh, President Franklin Roosevelt did Executive Order 6102, which forbid the holding of gold, basically, as a store of value. So uh, wealth store value has been confiscated before. This is what happens during very bad times like the like the Great Depression. It's much easier now to devalue the dollar. You don't really need to collect all, collect up all the gold in order to do it because we're no longer on a gold standard. But from the from a global perspective, Bitcoin offers both the rich and the middle class and the poor, the working class, a way to secure their savings that cannot be frozen, cannot be confiscated by any government. So this is very good news for the rich. It's also very good news for the poor. Bitcoin offers the rich and the poor a way to secure their savings that cannot be diluted by any central bank. The more money that the central bank prints in your currency, the higher the price of your Bitcoin goes in your local currency. So you really become immune. Obviously, individuals can be sought out. You can put a gun to their head, so to speak, metaphorically, of course, and try to take their Bitcoin. This becomes much more difficult when a lot of people own Bitcoin and it's really dispersed around the world. Uh, but best definitely Bitcoin is a huge improvement on gold, on real estate. It's very easy to move globally. It's easy to move it to a more friendly jurisdiction. It's much less easy to confiscate than a building, for example. If you own a large apartment building in Berlin, there's no way that you can beam that into another country or a more friendly jurisdiction when things go bad as they appear to be going in Berlin. If this were Bitcoin, very easy to quickly send it out of the, the country. You could leave the country yourself and your Bitcoin can be magically reconstituted anywhere you need to go. As such, Bitcoin offers us the best, the most secure private property rights that we've ever had. It's not perfect. As I said, there can always be force exerted on individuals. But even then, there's a good chance. So if someone came after me for my Bitcoin, for example, it's being it's stored using a multi-sig solution, which means I have multiple keys that need to sign to move the Bitcoin. I don't have access to these keys. They're all geographically dispersed. And so you end up with a situation where you can try to come after me, just using it, that as an example, and you still can't get my Bitcoin. Obviously, you can do physical violence against me, but you will not end up with any Bitcoin. By contrast, it's very easy to go after uh, someone who owns a building or to just take the building. And this has happened in many uh, hostile governments and hostile regimes. It ha happened during the Bolshevik Revolution. It happened under Mao in China. And it's now happening in major uh, major European cities like Berlin, probably coming to the U.S. as well. And this is one of the problems when you have the financial system begin to splinter and fall apart. You end up with, uh, you have ultimately end up with revolution or war or civil unrest. This is one reason it's very important that we move as quickly as possible to a more fair Bitcoin standard. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.